Hello and welcome to more The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. In the last episode, we made our way to Milari's mine right here, and we're going to try and get our sacred Percori crowd fixed. But for some reason, Ezlo is sticking his head out of the door. I don't know if it stinks in here or what, but he does have a message for us. Hey, hurry up and find that Milari so we can fix the sacred blade. Uh, okay, or we could talk to Ezlo a whole bunch because we haven't talked to him in a while. He's got a lot of dialogue to share with us. Have you noticed something odd about the Mountain Minish? Uh, I haven't even seen them. They're just a little different from the Forest Minish, aren't they? There seem to be many kinds of Minish, just as there are many kinds of human. And many kinds of hat, too. Mustn't forget the hats. Of course, Ezlo can't forget the hats. These Mountain Minish sure are hard workers. We should work just as hard and sing a spiffy little song like they do. Uh, Ezlo, do not ask me to sing. That never goes well. What do you think? Hey, kid, are you still... Ugh, very dry weather up here in New York, so you guys hear some voice cracks. It happens. Oh, okay, let's talk to Ezlo one more time. Nom, 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 nom. Come on, please, just five more minutes. I promise I'll get up in five minutes. No, snooze buttons are evil, guys. My life advice is get an alarm that does not have a snooze button. If you have the time to actually hit the snooze button, then you should just set your alarm five minutes later, honestly. Because uh, the five minutes, probably not doing crud for your actual rested state. Uh, maybe it feels kind of good, but it, uh, it's just wasting time. So just uh, either just get up or just set your alarm later. Anyways, this guy says the boss is down on the lowest level. And I got to say, we're talking to these mountain minish. I'm very glad that the Jabbernut we got back in Minish Woods actually affects these guys as well and not just the forest minish. So we're good there. Let's keep looking for this Malari guy. Got a few little rooms on the sides that are all seemingly empty, even though they've got giant glowing crystals, which are pretty cool. Over here, we do have one guy running back and forth, so let's go talk to him. Hey, buddy. Ting tong, tong along. Deep down, dig down, dig joy in the ground. I, mean, I saw the music notes. I was probably supposed to sing that, but like I said, guys, me singing is dangerous. I'm going to jump down here because stairs are for losers. Let's go talk to this guy. If you head outside from here, you can dig. You can go see the mine the humans dug. The boss doesn't let anyone go in there without permission. All right, we'll have to go get some permission, I guess. But not before I jump down here. Okay, so there's Milari. There's the guy we are actually here to talk to. We'll talk to these last two guys first, though. Ting along, tong along. Huh, what? Who am I? Well, I'm no less than the third best of the Minish Metalsmiths. I'm making swords with the boss. So would that make this guy the second best? Ting along, tong along. Huh, what? Who am I? Why, my lad, I'm the second best of the Minish Metalsmiths. Okay, so I guess that would make Milari the best, so let's go talk to him. Green clothes and an odd hat. Sir, might you be young Link? Uh, not young Link, I'm actually Toon Link, but uh, close enough. I am Milari, Master Smith. I hear you want me to reforge the sacred sword and help break a curse. I'll be needing the old sword, which holds the power of the elements first. Show me that broken Picori blade. I love all this adventure, what with the rescuing of princesses and such. I mean, we haven't rescued any princesses yet. I'd be happy to reforge this thing into a brand new sacred blade for you. All right, so we'll give him the broken Picori blade here. Uh, suddenly it has two parts. Have we just had the top of the sword the whole time? I'll take, it'll take me a while to rework your sword. In the meantime, you should track down the missing elements. One of them should be in the mine, the human dug. It's not far from here. Okay, so I guess we'll head that way. Let's get started. They'll just start smacking it. They'll be a while, Link. Let's leave them to it and find that element. Does this mean I can actually leave now? That would be very exciting. So, let's go talk to this guy. What? You're going to the mine? If you've talked to the boss, I won't stop you, but be careful. So, we do a little moonwalk. <laughs> we get the jingle, dude. We can actually go out. So, out we go. But we're still Minish-sized right now, and Minish cannot climb ladders, apparently. So, let's go and actually get big right here. And I'm going to be very careful not to jump down right here, because we're going to have to go through a whole bunch of Mount Crenel again to get back up top if we do that, and that would be unfortunate. Instead, we'll just go uh, look at this statue thing, which we've seen many of. Hey, that stone marker crumbled, and there's another one of those symbols. You know, no matter how many times I see that happen, it still rattles me. And no matter how many times you see it happen, you always say the same thing, as low. Well, this place looks friendly. Let's go inside. To the Cave of Flames. Wow, it's hot in here. Come on, let's not stand around wasting time. Find that element so we can get out of here. All right, but first we have to break some pots. Now, no chance for a red root from these, as far as I know. As usual, the uh, pots near the start of dungeons, a bunch of hearts. Now, we could go up to this door, but uh, it's going to be blocked off on all sides by blocks, the ultimate blocker. Now, we can't actually push any of those blocks along, so we can't go that way. But we can go inside here and get ourselves a new enemy. We've got bob -omb straight out of Mario. With these guys, you smack them once, they start running. Smack them again, they'll stop and they will explode. You could actually pick them up and throw them to use as an actual bomb, so you could blow up this, for example, with that. Or you could use your boomerang 
and uh, the boomerang will just one-shot these guys, which is super good. There we go, dude. Now let's see if we can get ourselves a red rupee. We got the blue one there. Got some more bombs. There's going to be a lot of bomb drops in this area because we're going to have to actually use the bombs. Now, like I said, you could use the bomb bombs to try to save some bombs, but we got that bigger bomb bag. We've got 30. Not really worried about that, but I am worried about this new enemy. Your sword won't make a dent in their thorny armor. Uh, flip them over before you strike. Well, yeah, our sword, not going to do crud. These guys are spiked beetles. They don't look like beetles, but they are. So to flip them over, we have to go get our shield out, just like that. And there we go. As long as you know their weakness, these guys are not too bad. Kind of let them attack into you, and you're good to go. And just like that, we already get ourselves a big chest. This is the compass. So let's go take a look at just how many treasure chests this place is going to have. So we've got all of them for the first floor, but basement one, lots of them. Basement two, also lots of them. So a lot of chests to go. And I should point out right here, you can see we actually do have some of the map uncovered. If you've gone into a room, you can see it. If you actually get the dungeon map, that'll let you see rooms you haven't been in as well, though. So because we don't have the map, the rooms that we've not gone inside, we can't see them. So we'll close out here, and let's keep going. Now, over here, we are going to have another new enemy. Whenever you see rupees just kind of chilling on the field like this, be very careful, because there's almost always going to be a rupee-like. These guys, I'll just go ahead and demonstrate. They'll grab you, and they will start to drain your rupees. You have to wiggle really quick to get out, and there we go. These guys are not threatening the green ones because they only steal one rupee at a time. And if you're quick enough, you can get away with only losing one rupee. Oh, unless you jump right back into them, dude. Okay, so we got that crud. Yeah, we just swing away a lot. They have quite a bit of health, but again, if you're fast enough, they'll only steal one rupee. So they're really not that bad. So hopefully we uh, just won't run into any that have a blue or a red rupee. That would be pretty evil. Okay, looks like we're good on pots here. We could push these along if we want to make ourselves a shortcut. Actually, we push that one down. There you go, buddy. But we don't need to go back. We need to go forward. Forward progress today. Got Mr. bob -omb. Give him an explosion. Yeah, if you don't already have the boomerang, if you've got the rupees for it, you should definitely get it before going to this area because being able to explode bob -omb's is extremely handy instead of having them run around like crazy and then exploding in random spots. Because the explosion, as far as I know, you can't block it. You can block the running, and if you block them, they will get knocked down, just like if you hit them with the sword. But you cannot block the explosion. This I don't think you can. I never actually tried that. I'm just kind of assuming you can't block it. It would make sense if you can't block the explosion. Got some Helmosaurs right here. We've dealt with these guys before. Just got to suck off their masks right there. Then we can suck them up and launch them just like that. And there's some more up here, so... Uh-oh! Darn it, Ezlo! I'm trying to suck things! This must be what the humans who built this mine used to get around in here. Maybe we should hop in. Hmm, what? After all this, you don't expect me to believe you're scared. There's nothing to be afraid of here. Come on, let's go! Okay, hold on. Let me just suck this dude's face off. There we go. And you know what? This one I'll go ahead and defeat with my sword. So if we go up top here, there is going to be a locked door. Nothing we can do there, so... In we go. Ah! Oh! What the crud was that, Ezlo? Sweet jumping jellyfish, that was awful! Hey kid, what are you smiling about? I knew it was madness to risk our lives in that rickety human contraption. From now on, let's just stick to our feet. Well, I mean, y your feet. Okay, Ezlo. Ooh, at least we get a rupee. We kind of killed a couple of keys along the way there. Got some more of these guys. Let's go get the boomerang out. We're gonna need it for the bob -omb right there. Oh. Need is a strong word. We don't need it, but it's very handy. And like I said, lots of bomb drops in this area. We're just not gonna run out of bombs. Oh, wow! I actually killed them close enough that they exploded and blew this up for me. Okay, let's get the gust jar back out. Yeah, that, that is one of the downside to uh, this game and a lot of earlier Zelda games is you can only have two items out at a time. So, yeah, we're going to have to do a lot of item swapping. Although, to be fair, even like Ocarina of Time, which lets you have three items out, you still had to do a lot of item swapping because the equipment menu, like when you wanted to change to iron boots or regular boots and stuff like that, that you still had to go to the menu for, so yeah, even some 3D Zelda games have a lot of item swapping going to the menus. So anyways, we kill those guys, we get a Minish Portal. Let's go shrink down. This one just has the same animation as the rock would have from uh, Mount Krennel, so no new animation there. We can go back that way, but we will be blocked off by those pots we had to throw. Those will respawn and they'll block our way. So instead, we'll go up here. Now these guys, we cannot defeat when we're tiny, so we're just going to have to be very careful. Up this way, there's a hole, but if we jump into that, well, it's a pit. We take some damage. There are some new enemies in the corners there, but we'll do a uh, actual nameplate for those once we encounter them more properly. 
So for now, we're just going to keep rolling along here. Go through these tiny doors, which are very convenient. And be very annoyed because we cannot pick up a heart piece as a minish size. Oh, crud, and the keys are ridiculous. So we'll keep moving along this way. And right over here, that is where those pots I was talking about are. So you can't get back that way. Instead, we'll just have to keep going down this way. And here we have another giant chest. We can't open that as minish, though. So we're going to have to keep going along. And we have a tiny spot very conveniently for us here. And that will lead to a minish portal. So let's go ahead and get back to big. With these little fires in the ground, we could use the Gustar to get rid of them. Or we can just swap at them or swipe at them with our sword. So either way, it works just fine. Let's see if we can get this guy. There we go. I do like to chop down the fire. Mostly it's just going to have health. I don't know if it can drop rupees, but... Well, just in case it can, I definitely want to chop them down. But here we will get a dungeon map. So before I mentioned that rooms that we've already been to, you can see. But now we can see all the rooms. So let's go take a look. And this is what the dungeon is going to look like here. So lots to do in Basement 2 still. Basement 3 is pretty much just the boss. So that's a thing. Wait, can we jump down without taking the ladder? No. I guess it's not a ladder. It's a staircase. Oh, well. So let's go right over here and get ourselves a blue kinstone piece. These blocks that we just walked on, after a second, they will drop down. So you got to be very careful. And Ezlo will be uh, giving us a warning way too late. Oh my, it looks really, really hot in that lava. Yeah, thanks, Ezlo. Trust me, falling into that would be a bad idea. I'm sure you agree. I mean, I guess I do. It, the lava does seem pretty evil here. So yeah, we don't want to fall into that. It'll, it'll hurt. It's kind of like falling into a pit, basically. So I'll suck off those pots. And now we can walk along just fine. And, uh, you know, I should show you guys something. If you actually touch the fire... Oh, oh. Never mind. There are certain fires in the game where if you actually get your butt lit, you'll start running around really quickly and uncontrollably. I guess these fires don't do that. So if you want, you can just walk onto them and take damage to put them out. Uh, kind of strange. I wish I would have known that before, but hey, now I know. We have another new enemy right here. These guys are an absolute joke. They're really not meant to be actual enemies. They're more of a puzzle piece, really. So you hit these guys, they turn into balls, and then we have to go and grab the balls. And then we can throw the balls and land them in those little, these little holes. And that'll let us walk along and get ourselves 50 rupees. So just because we can, I'm going to go ahead and fill all these holes with balls. There's one. And there's one. This one I do not want to knock into the lava if I can avoid it. Okay, grab this. There's absolutely no reason to actually throw all those into the holes, but I just felt like doing it. So, I did it. <laughs> Let's go grab these pots. Got another hole right here, but no ball to put inside of it. So, what we're going to have to do is give Ezlo a workout. Let's go down here. Just never let go, Ezlo. These sections always give me a flashback to Super Mario World when you have the balloon power up on Mario. But thankfully, this one does not run out as easily as that one does for Mario. So, there we go. Good job, Ezlo. We'll drop down. Push this aside. Hit the button. That'll open the door. And now we can push along this chest. Because there's that hole right there, but this chest is on top of a pillar. So if we push it over, it'll drop down. And now we can open it. Get ourselves a key. We already know what to do with that. We saw the uh, key door over by the uh, cart, mine cart. So we're going to go back and ride that crud. Uh, you know what? I just got to do it, guys. I got to look for those red rupees. Oh, Blue, you know what? That was worth it. That was definitely worth it. So let's ride this again. Hooray! And now let's go open a door. I don't know why the door on the far side opens as well, but it does, so that's convenient. So all we wanted to do is come over here, hit the switch, that'll rotate the little track right there. And now we have to go back and ride the minecart again, but this time it'll take us to a different spot. Let's go, Link. The heart piece, no! No, we still can't get it. So let's go get our shield out right here. That'll be pretty handy for these spike beetles. Not to be confused with spiny beetles, totally different thing. There we go. And now we can only go up. So now let's actually get introduced to blue traps. These guys will activate when you get near them, or when you get in their line of sight. They'll just fly towards you. They don't do a lot of damage. They're not really that big of a deal. Pretty easy to avoid as long as you watch out for them. So uh, I'm not too worried about those guys. I just got to worry about these keys knocking me into the lava. That would be bad. But they're not too bad either, actually. Let's go ahead and pick up this crud. Throw at these dudes. Got him. Yes, dude. So we could go up that way, or we could take the very obvious secret down here. Let's go get our bombs out. Blow that crud up. And hmm, I wonder what this will lead to. Let's go down. And I guess we can kill that keys. And we can go grab ourselves a heart piece. And this is a very big one, because now we've got a new heart container. Going to bring us up to six total hearts instead of just five. Looking pretty good. 
Ooh, blue rupee. Ooh, green rupee. Man, I guess if we get enough greens and blues, it kind of adds up and it makes up for the fact that we're not getting that many reds. But I did get a red last time, so I'm happy about that. I got my shield out, because once we go down here, suddenly, buttheads! We get surrounded by spiny choo-choos. Now, I'm going to try to do something a little bit crazy for this. I'm going to try to round them up. And a technique that I got a long time ago, the spin attack, kind of have not used it at all since I got it. So maybe I should finally put that to use. So let's see if I can round these guys up. And let's see if I can do something crazy here. Okay, there we go, dude. Oh, I didn't get to him in time. So yeah, these guys, if you spin attack them, it'll actually stun them. And then we can go in. Ah, oh, so what happens is one of them doesn't get hit and then it blocks the others. I was hoping I could get all of them. Oh, come on, come on. That's more like it, dude. Yes, the strategy has worked, kind of. Took a few tries to get it going. But yeah, the goal is basically get in there, stun a whole bunch, and then go crazy. But we got the cane of Packy or Pocky, or Pac-Man. I don't know. This mystical rod has the power to flip things over. Use it to charge up energy in holes and then flip up on out of it. Okay. Well, we've got our brand new item, guys. The cane of Pocky or Packy. I don't know, man. I love the look of this item. It explodes into a bunch of little stars when it hits walls. Now, what can we do with this crud? Well, I'll give you guys a little sneak peek. We can go ahead and we can flip crud, which is very, very satisfying. But we've got to the middle of the dungeon, so we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here for today. We'll come back next time and we will finish off the Cave of Flames. I'll see you guys then. <laughs>